Okay, so here we're getting some practice with number sets, which seems like an awful topic at first. When you first learn it, we, it seems at first that, it's, that, that this is just a bunch of memorization of types of numbers, but really uh, this is such a rich source of um, context for types of math that define what numbers really are. So if you're feeling frustrated, hang in there. Um, eventually you, you, you can see just how cool this stuff really is because the world of numbers is weird and there are so many different types and they all do different things. So if you're doing this for homework, maybe pause it, give it a shot, and then watch. If you're really lost, work with me, but definitely check your work. Here's what we're going to do. We'll start with the first one up here, which says which of the following square roots is an irrational number? So again, irrational numbers are numbers that when you try to write them as a decimal, they do two things. They never end, they never terminate. That's usually the phrase they use, terminate. And the other thing they do is they have no repeating pattern. So that, that, that's, that's a decimal form what happens, right? So if you get a number that's kind of like, this at point one seven one six one five one one two and then as you keep going no repeating pattern develops right you might see lots of ones and you might notice that it goes seven six five but really the pattern is not repeating for example let me just give you a counter example one seven one six one seven one six well this chunk is repeating over and over again that's rational right but if it but if we have some kind of weird pattern that's not repeating then it's irrational this is rational. And the, and the point is that's, that if there is a repeating pattern, there's a way to write it as a fraction. Here, without a repeating pattern, you cannot write it as a fraction, so it's irrational. That's another way of defining them. They're, they have no simple fraction formation. Right? You can't find a way to write it as a simple fraction. And, and another way we look at it is here with square roots. So the square root of a whole number when it uh, does not equal a whole number, when it equals some decimal, you know it's irrational. And that's really, there's a lot to that, but really we're just, that's, that's our focus here. And that's unfortunately something we're going to ask you at this point to try and memorize. Um, so, so what's happening here? Well, in the first one, the square root of one half can be thought of the square root of one over the square root of two. So I kind of look at this as two whole numbers. The, the square root of one is one. But the square root of two is not one, because one times one is one. And two times two is four, so this is a whole number with no whole number square root. So since part of this term is irrational, so is the whole number. This one is irrational. The next one, five, is also irrational because um, there's no whole number, right? Square root of 5, that's the square root of a whole number. There's no hum whole number times itself that gives us 5. So there's no exact decimal value. And that's, that's so, so weird about irrational numbers. These two numbers have no exact answer. If someone asks you what's the square root of 5 or what's the square root of 2, you can give them an estimation, but you could not give them an exact value. However, the square root of 4 is just 2, and the square root of 169 is 13. Because 2 times 2 is 4, and 13 times itself is 169. So A and B are both irrational. The next one, we're saying which of the following numbers, sets of numbers, that means the list or groups of numbers, sets or groups, contain no rational numbers? Well, the first one, one half, is, is rational. Because any number that can be written as a fraction, like this number over here would be 1716 over 9999. Right, whenever you have a repeating decimal, what you can do, I'll talk about this more in other videos, take the repeating chunk, that's your numerator, and then count the number of digits that repeat, and that will equal the number of nines in the denominator. So here I have four digits that repeat, one, seven, one, six. That's my numerator. The denominator then, because we have four digits that repeat, will have four nines in it. So there is a way to write this as a fraction, so it's rational. Here, we already have a fraction, simple fraction. Um, not like the square root of 2 or the square root of 3, but a simple fraction is, is one integer or whole number, positive or negative whole number, over another. That's a simple fraction, so that's rational. So, um, so this one can't be it. 
here, the first number, and they do this, this is kind of cheap, but I'm going to do it here too because I've seen it on test, so you're ready for it. Um, there's some decimal here with a dot, dot, dot at the end. When that, when you see that dot, 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 you can, you can guess that this pattern is not repeating. It just goes on and on with this random list. Um, if you, if you want to, if they would run that, if they wanted to represent a repeating pattern, what you will see is something like this. 1716 with a line or a vinculum, I'll pronounce that, I'll write it down, vinculum over it. That's how they show repeating. A dot 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 doesn't mean repeating, it means it goes on without a pattern. So this first one is irrational. It's a decimal, never ends, it keeps going, dot 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 with no pattern. Square root of 98, also irrational. So this is possibly a list with no rational numbers, right? The square root of 98 has no exact value, just like the square root of 5 and 1 half. Um, here though, um, the last one is rational because it's just 0.1234543. So here there's no repeating pattern, but it terminates or ends. So it's rational. In other words, I could write this as a fraction. I could just write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3 over, well, match it up with a number of zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros and a 1. That's the same thing. Right, so because I could find a way to write this as a, a, a fraction, right, I knew I could because it terminates, it's rational. So this does contain rational numbers. And so does this one, the square root of 4, that's rational, it's 2. 4 and 2 thirds, mixed number, right, a nice, a nice rational number, it's a fraction. And here, um, negative 4, all rational. What I'll say though is the 2 thirds, some people think that that's irrational because it equals 0.6 repeating. But again, if it's a repeating decimal, um, it is rational. You can write it as a fraction. There's a way to do that. So then uh, it has to be D. Uh, D is that list because pi is irrational and the square roots of all of these numbers have, all these whole numbers have no exact value. Um, this is a, a list or a set of irrational number numbers. So here in the last one it says which, which fraction represents a repeating decimal. Well, let's, let's look at this. One half is 0.5 but two thirds is 0.6 repeating and 3 fourths is 0.75 and 1 fifth is 0.8 so this is our answer and, and, and if you want to test these for 2 thirds take 2 and divide it by 3 and you might have to use some long division here to figure this out so 2 divided by 3 well 3 does not go into 2 but we can say it goes into 20 how many times? well 6 times 3 times 6 18 subtract well now this is 0.2 and again well, same thing's happening. 3 doesn't go into 2, but we add a 0 and drop it. 3 goes into 20 six times. And this is going to keep happening, so that's a 0 0.6 repeating. And you can do that with all of these to figure out if they are repeating decimals or not. Um, but I will, I will, if, you, if you're confused about long division, check that out in other videos. All right, thanks.